Hello, I'm Catherine, welcome to my studio and today I'm going to show you how to make what I'm calling non Christmassy Christmas cards. Um, you might have seen a video I did before which I'll link up where I made prints just using leaves from the garden, my jelly plate and acrylic paint. Well I wanted to build on that technique to make these style of cards um, but I've layered up a bit more with these. Um, I hope that will pick. And what I, my sort of concession to make them a bit Christmassy was to use iridescent paint. Um, that one uses one, a bluey black one. Um, that's got a sort of one that shifts from green to blue. Um, and it was sort of, I was thinking that um, it just wasn't my style to make them kind of too overtly glittery or, you know, put Christmas trees all over them. Um, but I wanted to make them sort of pretty and a bit sort of wintry and I also thought that um, you don't just have to use them for Christmas they're sort of I'm hoping they're Christmassy enough that they can be used um, and I've got a little sale coming up where I'm selling um, some of my dried flowers and wreaths and things and I thought this would be a nice add-on um, but if they don't sell, I'll use them myself and um, I think they can be used as sort of note cards the rest of the year as well. So keep watching if you'd like to know how I did it. So what I did lots of trialling um, to come up with this technique and one of the th main decisions I made was not to print on separate bits of paper or card and then make them into cards, you know, where I'd have to stick them on in some way. Um, for a couple of reasons, I think it's harder to achieve a sort of good sort of finish that way. Um, but the main thing is I thought it would be quite time consuming because you're adding a sort of another process also another messy process when you're using glue so you've got the potential of ruining the work that you've already done. Um, so what I did, I found these um, very well priced cards, so I'll link, link them below. So they're a nice sort of cartridge, thick cartridge paper, they already come with a crease down them and they come with the envelopes as well so you've got everything you need and um, I can't quite remember how much but I'll put the link below but they were very good value. I think they worked out at about 17p each or something. Um, it did mean though that because I was printing directly on the card I had to try and keep everything sort of quite clean and I'm normally quite a messy worker so um, but I managed to do it okay. There were a few that you know did get a bit smeary. I often find that it, you sort of forget that you've got a bit of paint on your hand there and then you put your hand down. I tried to wash my hands a bit more so a few got, um, you know, they weren't good enough to actually be cards or I layered too much and they started to get muddy. But I've got a way of using up those as well and I'll show you that at the end. Plus, I came up with another way of sort of doubling the amount of cards from the ones you've made with, not, with very little effort and I'll share that with you at the end as well. And the plant material that I used, I used, I wanted to use the quite sort of flat things. I wouldn't recommend using anything too bulky because you want to make good contact between um, the plant material and the plate. Um, and even then, I once I picked them, I pressed them, not in a flower press or anything, I just put them between paper, newspaper, and just put them under some books overnight, and that seemed to be enough. Um, so I'm, I've been using eucalyptus, which is in, in my garden, um, and cow parsley, seed heads, I don't know if that shows up on, on camera, um, which I just picked from when I was on my walk, and even uh, even those I, could, I managed to flatten without breaking them, and they've got a pretty sort of starry silhouette. Um, and the same, I had some rushes in the pond, with lots of these very pretty seed heads and um, I thought those looked a bit starry as well. You can see how some of these have got still got paint on and I found that I could reuse them over and over again and I didn't sort of lose any detail. But I'm mainly using this, a similar technique to last time but with a few variations plus I brought another technique into it as well. And then I also, as well as those, um, I use ferns because I think everything looks better with a fern on it and they're my, probably my favourite thing to print because they pick up the detail so well. So, let me show you how I did it. 
I'm using acrylic paint on my medium sized gel plate. I'm mixing a couple of colours here, um, brown and blue. And you might have seen at the beginning that I had a couple of blank cards underneath. That's just to give me a rough idea of the size that I'm going to be printing, but it's not necessary. And anyway, I've obscured it with this paint, but some of the, some of the other colours, you can see them. And I'm using cow parsley for this. They make really good um, indentations. So I'm just kind of auditioning them by seeing what would look good where. And then to pick up this layer, I'm using tissue paper or sometimes I use calligraphy paper. You can see it's such fine paper that you can really press it in. And the more you press, the more detail you're going to get on your plate and the more paint around it you're going to remove. So both those things will give you a good clear print. And it's actually quite fun when you can see it through the paper. When I've used it several times, you're not going to be able to see it because it, as you can see, I build up layers. But then all these pieces of tissue paper and calligraphy paper, I just keep and I can use for collage. So nothing's wasted. So you can see that I've taken off a really good amount of paint. And as I take the cow parsley off, you can see that that's a lovely pattern left. So I leave it to dry now and it doesn't take very long because it's quite thin and I sometimes use a hairdryer to speed it up and I'm using a pale colour to lift it and you don't want to use too much. Um, go as thin as, as you possibly can and you'll get the best result. If you can still sort of see the image through it that's a good indication. And one of the things I've learned quite recently, really, is that a lighter touch actually mixes the paint better. You think you've got to sort of press it quite hard, but actually the lighter you go, the better mix and more even layer you get. You can sort, as you see, there's almost like a shadow of the um, plant forms underneath. I'm putting my card straight onto the plate and I will, I want to remove the paint surrounding them so I'm putting this piece of paper and then what I normally do is put a couple of books on top and um, leave it for as long as I can bear or go and do something else instead. It doesn't matter if you leave it quite a long time. Now I'm pretty sure that it's dry, both layers have dried so I'm taking my rough piece off and then they stick pretty well to the plate, so you have to kind of peel them off quite carefully. I'm just double checking that there's really good contact. Some occasionally you leave bits behind, that, that just happens. So you can see how there's quite a lot of resistance, but that they're picking up that first layer really well. And I think this sort of colour combination gives you a lovely sort of wintry silhouette. So I was quite pleased with those ones. Now I'm using my ferns and I'm using this um, iridescent blue black paint. When you use iridescent paint, it tends to be thinner and a bit more watery. So um, you're not going to be able to get a thick layer and that's quite good because as I was saying, you get a better kind of, you get more detail on a thinner layer, which seems counterintuitive, but um, trust me, it works. Um, but it does, because it is a, got, maybe it's got more water content, it does take longer to dry. So that's something to bear in mind. So this is a piece of tissue paper that's been used several times, as you can see. So you're not going to be re really be able to make out um, as you could with the cow parsley, but you can do it by feel. So peeling that off and you can see how much paint that's taken. And I'm now putting um, a very pale colour on top once I've waited for that layer to dry. So again, a really light touch will keep an even layer on top. And you probably can't pick it up because it's the colour, it isn't such a high contrast, but I could see still make out the patterns through that layer. So same thing again, putting the cards, putting a piece of paper on top. And then after it was dried, which I did off camera, because 
that would be very boring to watch. Um, I don't, I mean, these look, these look so pretty. Um, there's just something about this paint that um, I really, I'll put the details below because um, I just think you get a lovely effect with it. Um, and I'm using this copper paint. Um, again, you can see it's got this sort of quite thin consistency. So it's a little bit harder to get even, but it, it works well as long as you leave enough time to dry. And I don't have to cover the whole plate because I know now where my cards are going to go. So I'm quite pleased with that composition. Um, I think this is some of the click-free paper, which is, which is slightly more opaque than the tissue paper. But you can see as I'm rubbing, as I'm pressing down, that it's um, picking out the detail really nicely. Sorry about the camera shaking, it's because it's attached to the table. So when I'm rubbing, everything kind of vibrates. Quite hard to pick out on camera here, but there's some lovely sort of delicate detail. So again, I wait for that to dry. Light's changed a bit now. So I'm going to take both layers off with a sort of slightly greeny, creamy colour. I think that looks nice with the copper. So exactly the same process, putting the cards down, making sure there's good contact. And um, I waited, I put books on it and waited, waited for it to dry. And these were quite subtle, pretty, pretty but quite subtle. So because of that, I decided to put some more layers on it. You can do this in several ways. You can do more with a jelly plate or you can use a stencil. I've got something called a Thermofax machine where I can make my own sort of silkscreen type um, stencils. If you're interested in that, um, let me know in the comments and I could do a video about that. You don't need to have your own machine. There are, and I'll put some contacts below. There are a couple of companies that you just send your design and they'll make it for you. And it works really well for detailed designs. So I'm using the blue green paint here, the iridescent one. Actually, <laughs> I've got one that's blue green and one that's green blue. And I think this is the slightly bluier one. There isn't much difference between them. And I'm using the eucalyptus again here. And again, rubbing really firmly down to pick up as much detail as possible. I do really like how these um, rough pieces of paper look by the end of the day because they've got several layers, all kind of random. A little bit to see on camera, but they have left um, a good amount of detail. And this is something you can do. If some paint's been left behind, in places you don't want it, you can. I tend to use a slight dampened um, kitchen piece of kitchen towel or masking tape, and you can take off any bits that you don't want to transfer. So I've waited for it to dry, and I'm using a, another sort of beigey taupe colour. 
and kind of sticking to this sort of wintry colour theme rather than sort of Christmas colours of green and red. So a nice thin even layer. Sometimes seeds and things fall off the plants but you can just pick those out. So again, taking off the excess, giving it a last press. I think with these, I was quite pleased with the colours, but thought there wasn't enough definition. So I decided to do more layers on top. And I just thought I'd show you one. This is one where it didn't take everything off the plate. So I was left with these um, white areas. So what I've done, I've just got a slightly watered down mixture of the paint I used to pull it off. And I'm just filling in the gaps. And when that's dry, I'll put some other layers over the top. So this is the way that you can rescue something that might not have turned out very well in the first place. So now I'm going to put another layer on. And although you can just put, as I showed you in the first place, you can, rather than doing two layers, you can just put one layer on your plate and immediately put that onto your card or paper. But another way you can do it is instead of using paint, you use acrylic medium, which is sort of like the paint, but without any pigment in. And that means that you're not going to cover up anything already on your card. And I quite like this method because it gives you a bit more time to play with. And if you just print it and then straight away put it on your card, um, I just think there's more jeopardy in it. And I quite like um, this method. So you do exactly the same. You do your first layer put your plant material down, peel your paper off, and then peel off your plant and wait for it to dry. Again, I'm removing a few little bits that got left. And you might just see, I was slightly out of shot there, I think I used, um, I've got this little travel hairdryer that's not very, um, doesn't blow very hard because they never do. They're actually useless for drying your hair, but quite good for drying paint. So this is me putting the acrylic medium on. It's quite, it's got a runnier consistency than the paint. Um, so you want to be careful you don't put too much on. But it works in exactly the same way. Um, I'm, I'm sort of carefully thinking about where I want to position it on the card. Uh, that's me thinking. Okay, decided to go that way. And again, you want to take the excess off your plate. So having wait, waited for it to dry. So you just get the paint layer, um, but everything else is transparent. This was another one I did that process too, but then I decided it needed something else. So I'm going in with one of my um, stencils. Um, and I made these, um, thing about Thermofax prints is that you can, again, you can make them from the same plant material. So these are a few more that I decided to embellish in the same way by putting some more layers.
So I think that was clear. Um, and just to show you what I did with the one, any ones that either they got smears inside or I decided I didn't like them. They got too kind of muddy if, you, if you're layering up too much. Um, but there are parts of them that I liked. I mean, it's quite an obvious thing to do, but I have cut them up and made them into tags. And these can be used as gift tags or I might use them with my details on so I can sort of tie them onto wreaths and things at my sale. Um, and I, something I do quite a lot is that I photograph my artwork as I'm going along, um, chiefly to have a record of everything, but also because I get them printed, then I like to reuse them into a newer piece of artwork or add them to something I've already done. And I did, I think it was on Instagram, I did, um, I did a reel about it because you can get the you can get them free and in fact the one I use is called free prints it's it's an app and you get um, up to 40 prints every month um, and you just have to pay postage and I think the reason they do it is because you can only get one copy you can't do multiple copies of the same thing so I think they're banking on you wanting that and also if you want different sizes that then they charge for that and that's how they make their money. But um, it's very easy to do. You just download the app and you upload the photographs. And um, these were some that I did last time. I don't know if you saw my video, um, my Cabinet of Curiosities sketchbook. Um, I'll link that up there. Um, but I, um, I got a lot of them, I got a lot of the pages printed from that. And I was thinking about this and I thought, they might be around about the same sort of size as the cards and I tried it and they're kind of they're exactly the same size so what you could do um, you could get finish your cards take good photographs of them get them printed and then you would that would involve some sticking then but because they're nice sort of rigid um, pieces of card I think it would be quite easy to do that and they'd still have a good finish um, then you double your number of cards and if you because you're only as I was saying you're only allowed to do a, one copy of each one but what you could do is you could reverse the image so any um, image software will let you do that you can flip it that way or you can flip it that way and that would count as a different image so you could say you'd made 20 cards with the printing method you could then have end up with 40 and um, with you know just you just have to pay for the postage and the cards and that would give you more than double your original so it's a good way of being able to increase the number of cards you can make so I hope you found the information helpful thank you so much for watching just to say that I am um, sort of vlogging getting ready for this sale um, so that will be a video coming up soon so I'd love it if you'd watch that as well